Shebolt here with a new video that I think could help many hammockers. I've often wondered what I would do if I did not have trees or if I chose to camp out on top of a bald or even in somebody's backyard. How would I possibly go to the ground and use my shelter system? In this case, my shelter is a hammock gear palace tarp. Quite a large tarp, very effective for hammocking, but would I be able to take it to the ground and use it as a bottomless tent? Now I am no expert at this, but I have practiced enough with my tarp to come up with a system that gives me a fairly consistent setup, and I've learned from my mistakes so I thought I would share them with you here and now. I store my tarp in a tarp sleeve for hammocking purposes, and this does make it a little bit difficult to take to the ground. I've got to pull it out of the stuff sack, then I've got to work it out of the sleeve. It's a lot easier to work out of the sleeves when it's strung between two trees than when I'm trying to do it on the ground. However, I only have to undo it halfway before I can spread it out and be ready and in a position to string it up on one end onto the ground. I do not use a continuous ridge line when setting up my tarp between two trees, opting instead for two 12-foot end ridge lines. This becomes extremely important when I take my tarp to the ground and set it up as a tarp tent. The real key to setting up the tarp tent is how you initially stake it out. I start with the doors and I make sure I grab each D-ring to the center of the door and I know which one is pointing towards the wind and weather and which one is pointing away from the wind and weather. I stake out the one towards the wind and weather first, driving a shepherd hook through the center of the D-ring and into the ground. I then pull the one that's facing with the wind oh, and away from the wind with a second shepherd hook and overlap that first one four to six inches. I have found this to be pivotal to the overall setup of the tarp tent and a key to consistency. With the center door staked down, I go to a corner, in this case the left rear corner, and pull against those centered shepherd stakes. Then drive a triangle groundhog stake into the corner loop, staking it down. I then go to the left front corner and pull against the other stakes and stake it to the ground the same way, securing one end of the tarp to the ground and this becomes a key point to pull from and create tension from in order to set up the tarp tent. If you get this one end secured effectively to the ground, everything will work off of the tension created by these stakes and will go up smoothly and effectively. Next comes the center ridge line, the peak of the A-frame tent. I start with my trekking pole and it's usually measured to where the bottom clip is at 130 and the top clip is at 125. And I slide this up so the handle is pointing up and slide a Z-Pack tent cup over the handle of the trekking pole. Now the Z-Pack tent cup is not mandatory, but I found it makes it easy to set up the tarp when in porch mode and when going to the ground. And the weight is minimal, so I rely on the tension I can create pulling down on that tent cup. See Z-Packs for that little piece of equipment. And I'll show a video later on here, video picture that will later on show you how this works. I then take the ridge line that's on part of the tarp anyway and drive a stake into the ground and then simply loop 
the ridge line around that stake creating tension. You can see that it pulls out in an angle because a tarp is cantorary cut or cat cut and so its length and its actual width are different. The sides are not as long as the center ridge line. In this case the center ridge line is 11 feet and the sides are about six and a half feet and so there will be an angle to this which anybody that uses a tarp with doors on a hammock tree setup knows that a lot of times when you secure those doors they come at an angle back under the tarp itself. Now that the one end is secure you can see how easily the tarp sleeve slides to the opposite end exposing the rest of the tent to be secured to the ground. At this point I will simply repeat the process from the left side of the tarp to the right side. Again searching for those center door D-rings overlapping them four to six inches, driving a shepherd hook into each D-ring and securing them to the ground. There is one slight difference when I stake out this end and that is that I do hold the door by the D-ring and go to one corner and then the other and measure and pull against the other stakes to make sure that I'm getting the ground taunt and the line as taunt as I can. Again, it's a cat cut. It's not going to be perfect, but it gives me a better idea of where to drive those shepherd hooks and then where to place the corner stakes so that they're tension and pulling against all four corners and giving me a chance for a great setup. At this point, I should point out that I do not just use stakes. I have my guy lines already attached to the stakes, and I use what's called a Dutch hook in my hammock tarp setup. And so these stakes come with a rope a line of reflective on them, and that's what you see me unraveling and tossing out of the way. And I will use that reflective in a few minutes to actually help secure and create a little bit of tension to hold the tarp tent in place. This last corner is a real key to the entire setup. You want to make sure you've got this corner pulled nice and taut and in the proper location so that everything goes up smoothly. As you can see, I leave the tarp sleeve on the end of the tarp just like I would in a hammock set up between two trees. And I then pull the ridge line tight, putting the Z-Pack cup over the trekking pole and then pulling down to a stake in front to secure it. I then raise the trekking pole up. This is one of the reasons why the top section I leave at 125, it may go to 130, 132, maybe even up to 135 to really get the tent taunt. I then do the same thing at the opposite end with the other trekking pole so that tent is as taunt as I possibly can get it. It will never be totally taunt because of the cut of the tarp and the difference between a tarp and a regular tent, but it will be secured nicely. Here you can see where my Reflectix line is used to pull against the Z-Pack tent cup to create tension. There's the front line as well. On this side facing the weather, I take advantage of the side pullouts by connecting the Reflectix line and the Dutch hookworm to those and pulling out to create more space inside against the wind. Just another variation and option that hammockers will understand. Here is the actual Z-Packs and the ridge line. 
pulling down in front. Now I'll take you inside the tent, pulling the door open. You can see my pads laid out. I've also got a Z-Pack rain kilt off to the left as a ground cover, moving from one end to the other. The peak is fairly high, about four feet high. And there actually is quite a deal of space, room inside. I'm laying down on the Thermarest pad, showing you that my feet don't really touch the door, my head doesn't touch. I'm six foot tall, so there's over six feet of length. You can see the sides. so that the rain would hopefully run off and not run back into the tent. The doors overlap towards the weather so that I'm pretty well protected in an A-frame tent. Once you take the shepherd hooks out, you can go in and out either end of the tent or you can decide how you want to enter and exit. Once again, you can see the trekking pole supports, z -pack tent cup, and the setup, which is complete at this point. You could stop the video at this time, or if you want, you can watch me take it down and put it away, which is, has its own little nuances.